places first. So we're going to pick up, we're going to pick up PC934 and we're just going to start circular motions in light levels, sorry, in light pressure, the cheekbone area. We're going to try and cre create some tone. And I'm going to try as much as I can to follow the original um, color scheme. I'm going to go a bit around her lips. This is. And I apologize for the noise in the background. I haven't really soundproofed my room yet, but we'll just see how this goes. Now, I'm using the Derwent Sharpener. This one's really good. It's one of my favorite ones because it has a, ca a canister to catch all the um, sharpens. So we're going to go and use the PC934. And I have Breezy in the room as well. If you guys don't know, Breezy's my dog and sometimes he keeps me company. I'm going to go in a slate grey, which is 936, and we're just going to do the shadow around her eyes. And so this color is going to go right underneath her brow bone here. And it's going to go up here. Remember to rotate your pencil as well. So I'm really going to just trust the process and just go with the flow when it turns, when it goes with colouring. I'm not going to really think too much about it. I'm just keeping my strokes very light. We're going to go put some slate grey around the hairline. I'm going to blend it out and connect it up. I'm going to put some of this slate grey down here. Now because her hair is white, I haven't quite figured out how we're going to do this in pencil. And I'm considering um, adding pastel to this piece so I can show you how to do white hair obviously with the bright with the dark lines in the drawing it's hard to like get the proper highlights so I might show you guys how to do white hair um, using pastel and pencil just like that and I'm gonna do the cupid's bow also in slate green 
bring it up to the nose and a bit of shadow under her lip. Back in with the lavender, which is 934. We're just going to go over these grey slate areas and just layer the colour. So what you guys can do is, with this video, I'm not going to put any uh, music in the background. We're just going to have audio and background noise. And you guys can just put on some music um, while playing this video. That way it doesn't get too annoying. So I'm just layering this lavender colour on top of the slate grey. and blending it out. And we're going to go slightly over that as well. Slightly beyond the boundary. It out. Remember to rotate your pencil as well. So, in order, what I'm going to do is pick up this blush pink, which is 928. We're going to go where her um, rosy cheeks are. We're just going to go on top of that lavender and blend that out. Layer the colour also on top of that lavender. And we're just going to contour her cheeks a bit. Bring it down to the shadow around her lips. And then bringing it up to her eye. And we're also going to do it here as the cheek. So bring this color all the way up to the eye on the high cheekbone, light layers. We're going to sculpt the cheek. Yeah. Doing it very lightly though. And then while we're at it, we're going to go on top of that slate grey and lavender colour and blending it out. Keeping our layers very, very light. I'm going to do some of this blush pink 928 around the lips as well, going on top of that lavender. The lips will end up being very palely dark, but I just want that pink undertone to like be prominent. So that's why I'm doing the layers first for the pink, and then we'll go on top with the darker colors so it's more, more similar to the original painting. I'm going in with a light peach, which is 927. And then we'll go over everything, blending it out with that color. And 
on this side as well, blending it out again. Rotating my pencil. I'm also going to put this colour here. Slowly rotating my pencil again as I do this. And see how I'm going a bit beyond what was originally there. So you can see this light peach colour come through. You can see that here and here. I'm going to run it also up to, all the way up to the hairline, like so. And don't you worry if it doesn't look exactly like the original, because we're going to keep layering colours and it's all good. Now with colouring, you just got to trust the process and go with the flow. Don't try to perfect things too much and allow yourself to express without controlling too much of what you're doing. I'm going to bring this peach colour, the 927, near the brown bone. Now I'm leaving this area white almost because this area has the highlights which is in the original painting and above the brow bone as well. So I'm almost keeping like a like a square a square shape here. Almost like a trapezium or whatever it is. Now, I realize there is some warmth in this skin, so I want to add additional color, like a, a warmer tone skin. So I think beige is the right color. I also pulled out a cooler skin tone as well for the cooler areas. Now, honestly, guys, a good pencil sharpener goes a long way. I've had this for almost over five years. It's sharp as ever, and... It's one of the best pencil sharpeners I have besides the Tagal. And I love this so much because it's got that canister. And it may be like, I can't remember how much I paid for it, but I know it was around $30 to $50. But, you know, I've had this forever. It, and I take good care of it. So why not? Why not, in, why not invest in yourself? Spoil yourself a little. So the beige is a 997. We're going to go over these areas because I want to... I want to flush out that pink tone that you can see currently and give it a bit more warmth. And the beige has um, yellow undertones in it. So you can see that, that yellow coming through now and giving that warmth, tanned color to the skin while keeping it still quite light skin, uh, very like very pale still. So we're gonna go around the chin. So I'm going to try and keep my tutorials um, 
very tutorial based it's not going to be so much about life because i think children would benefit from learning to color this way as well though it is it could be quite advanced um i believe the content is still accessible to young kids who are very serious about learning to color and express themselves so there's not going to be much life talk just tutorials So I'm going to bring this down to the nose. Remember this color is very light so it's still going to need some layering of other colors on top. Going up to the brow bone, to the right, and then we're going to do the left side again with the 997, layering on top of all those colours, keeping your pressure really light because we don't want to flatten the paper so quickly. Rotating my pencil. Going near the, near the cheeks. Overlapping this colour, this beige colour, on top of the blush that's appearing. And this just like kind of just knocks back the the lavender tone to a more blush tone and transitions more naturally to the skin color that I'm laying down right now. We're going to run this over near the cupid's bow as well because I'm going to lay down some transition colors between the cupid's bow. And I'm going to layer more of this beige near the hairlines and the eyebrows just to give it more of a warm tone to the skin I'm trying to add more of this beige color here between the eyes because I want to neutralize it so it um, becomes more of a shadow tone and that blue undertone is um, quite prominent in the original painting we're gonna go over this area a bit more because I just want to knock back that blue slate color And also here around the lips, rotating my pencil again, layering it up a bit, and then continuing my circular motions, and also on the cupid's bow. I'm going to go in another color. It's called beige peach which is 1085 and I know we've put all the color in to make it warm but we're going to cool it back down mainly where the slate gray is as you can see it's neutralized that blue it's not neutralized it, but it's kind of blended it out a bit more. And now it's more, more prominent that it's a shadow rather than just blue. So if I do it here, between the eyes, it 
And then as I'm going past all that blue and lavender color, I'm lifting my pressure as I blend it out. And I'm keeping my strokes quite a lot larger and looser. Changing my angles as well. Now don't you worry about these horizontal strokes from the paper grain. That will eventually get um, burnished out. And burnishing is basically flattening, flattening the paper with a colour or no colour. Um, you can go with a colourless pigment and it will retain it or you can use white. In this case, because we have some highlights here, I like to use white. And that also retains that light skin tone as well. And obviously the more layers you add, this, the more your paper starts to flatten out a bit. And that's why we continuously lay thin layers. And it gives you more control as well. So we're going to put this uh, beige peach, which is the 1085, on the cheeks as well. And here on the chin and jawline, just to knock back that blue, turning it into a more shadow colour. I'm overlaying it also on top of the pink colours that we've laid down, lifting up my pressure as I'm going to the highlight zones, and the same near the brows. at the hairline. I'm going to go in with that slate grey, just let me sharpen it. The nose and the lips a bit more. So let's just zoom in a bit. Now, if you look at the original painting, the lips are not so much pink, but they're very blue with a hint of the pink coming through. So we're going to try and keep it the same. Can't promise you that I'll get it exactly right, but I'll try my best. What I'm doing is just contouring the lips just to give it a bit more shape as per the um, original painting. Keeping everything really soft. To be honest, in these moments, sometimes I stress that I'm not getting it right, but you know, sometimes you just gotta let it organically happen, you know, and don't get too caught up in the, oh, it's not looking like the original, I messed up. There's always ways to fix it. There's always ways to take things back creatively. You just have to learn to manipulate the material. So it's really blue at the moment, right? 
what I want to go in with is like a pink color, pinky red color. So my thoughts are, yeah, color, and towards the bottom. It looks like her lips are bruised, but I think it's just the tone of the. It's such a cool tone skin, so I think a bit of brightness in these areas will just lift it a bit. I'm just going to, I want to give this almost like a teardrop shape. I'm going to blend it out this way a little to the left. So we're going to now what I want to bring back in is like a cool cool toned purple or maybe a glue okay blue slate sorry this was gray slate blue slate is 1024 and I think the blue slate will neutralize this more let's just sharpen it on top of that magenta color which was the 930 on top with the 1024 and you can see as I'm doing this it keeps that redness still I'm going to bring this into the middle of the lips and then we're going to overlay to the left on top of that slate, keeping the layers really light. I'm just going to go over really lightly. Now I'm going to go in with a purple. Now I'm looking for a greyer type of purple. So we'll go in with the grey lavender. Which I think is a perfect color. I'm keeping this area white still. And I want to go on top of these magenta colors. Blend those out. Then I want to bring it all the way up to the top of the lip. And again here. Bring it down again. I'm going to increase the pressure a little here on the left and also towards the bottom of the lip. I'm going to go in with a white prism to color. Maintain. And the reason why is the highlight bits as much as I can. So I'm going to go hard here. Yeah. And anywhere there is a highlight. Which is on my side. Top of the lips. Okay. Let's go back in with a pink. We'll go back in with the lavender, which is 934. Because this lavender has a pinky tone in it. Bring it back with some slate grey, which is 936. Layering this to the bottom.
Let's bring some of that flake grey colour towards the middle. And as you can see, the, the paper's flattening now. That's perfectly fine. And I'm going to put a bit of pressure towards the bottom. Like so. And then I'm going to go on top with the white, which is 938. Now, we're going to go over everything and burnish it out, and it's going to lighten the entire pigment of the lips. Like so. This is a one mil in white. I'm going to go in a little Because what I love about Posca pens is that it's an acrylic marker. So, um, you can place it on top of these white outlines. And you knock back a lot of that dark colour that comes through the the colouring print. I'm gonna go in with my zero point seven mil. This one is more white. The other was a bit more opaque, probably because it was a new marker. I'm going to go in with 936, which is this slate grey. I'm going to create a V shape. And yes, it's going to cut out some of that acrylic Posca pen. I'm going to blend it out as well. pressure is quite hard right now but not too hard just hard enough to allow me to still layer things up but I know I'm running out of um, working paper because it's getting flat I'm 
going to blend this area as well. I want to go back in with that magenta, which is 930. I want to emphasize that teardrop. go in with like a grey colour. Let's see if we can get like a warm grey in there. My thoughts are French grey might be the colour. Bright pink. I'm looking for more of like a grey colour. So I'm going to go on top of all that pink, all of that blue, tone it down a bit. Back in with the slate grey. I'm going to go under the lips a little as well with this slate grey. Bring it up to this area. Circle motions. I'm going to bring some of this slate grey here. I pressure it a little bit harder because I want to emphasize the the inner the inner lips. Same here. Now I'm going to blend that out, connect it this way. Blend this up to the nose, lighten my pressure as I get to the button nose. Then we're going to go around with the 936 and around. I'm going to create the shadows on the button nose. In with the 934, we're going to go on top of that slate grey, blending it out. In with the 934, we're going to go on top of that slate grey, blending it out. And then we'll eventually blend out with a skin tone such as light peach or beige.
I'm also going to use this blush pink area and increase the pinkness on the cheeks here. We're going to also integrate a new pink colour as well, something a bit more warm. We're going to go in with a light peach, 927. And extend that and connect it to the nose. We're going to also go around the nose as well, blending that out. Also here around the lips, I'm trying to neutralize and blend out that lavender color. I've increased my pressure a bit here. And here as well. I burnish and I feather it out. Those colors that I want to retain, that's what I do. Now here I'm just keeping it light, blending it out. Now what we're going to do is, from here, we're going to connect this with a light peach. And just do light colours, keeping this still quite white here as well. We're going to go back in with a slate grey, which is 936. And we're going to... Create some shadows around the nose. And then we're going to lightly disperse our pressure, lifting it and blending it out. So I kept my motions really small, like so. more slight grey here and make this shadow here along the jawline more prominent is we're going to connect these two shadows and between here the layer will be really light of a slate grey and we do this so that the blending and transition between the two is softened and it's not, in ha not as harsh so I'm holding my pencil very lightly my strokes are quite long but light at the same time now I'm going to change my pencil grip do smaller strokes but still keeping my pressure soft so I can blend between the two like so and then so as a distance you see things transition a bit better between here and here okay next color is the beige which is 997 we're going to go on top of that slate grey and blend it out. And so what you can see is these two colours have a different type of tone. And that's because the layering and the pressure of the pencil. And I did that on purpose. I'm going to go back in with a 928. I'm just going to create some 
pinkness around the eyes. Back in with a beige. My pressure is probably medium, and then I lighten it as I get to the centers. Here I am going on top of the pink and blending it out to the skin, like so. Same as here. Back in with my light peach, which is 927. And I'm just going over the whole thing, and particularly the nose. My pressure is a bit more hard because I am slowly burnishing those colours together around the nose and on the button nose bit, which is here. I'm going in with a cream, which is 914. Let's zoom out a little. I'm lightly going over everything. dog. Breezy's four years old at the moment um, and he's an English, he's a blue English staffy and he's the sweetest thing in the world. A lot of people have this um, idea that staffies are very scary and violent just because they have this history of being fighting dogs but um, and that's because a lot of them, some of, not a lot of them, but some of them are fighting dogs and they go into rescue centers and they still have that trauma um, of being a fighting dog and it's and that's why you see them sometimes snap um, but generally uh, you should just ask the owner about the dog my breeze is very gentle it's very loving it's very intelligent very cheeky so what I'm going to do is I've gone over everything in the cream And I'm springing it closer towards those highlight zones. Near the, near the hair though, I am going to cover that up with the cream. My pressure's medium. Rotate my pencil. Transitioning over everything. Blending it out. Like what I did here between the nose in the, the bridge of the nose at the top here. So, like what I did here, I like grey in this area. But the thing is, I want to keep it really light. And I'm going to end the slight grey to around here. I blend it out. I'm gonna increase. I'm gonna add another layer of the slate grey, which is the nine three six. Here, um, just because I want to increase increase the contrast of this piece. Also do a bit of slate grey here as well. And frame the face a bit more.
Now I am bringing a little bit of slate gray here and on the cheeks, but only because I'm using it as like a shadow for the hair, not to shadow, not to create shadow for the face, but shadow for these elements, the hair, these little birds. such. I'm going to go back in with the 928. We're going to blend out that slate grey now. Like so. I'm going to increase my pressure here at the tear ducts. I might bring in a bit of magenta as well. And the reason why I'm using magenta is because it connects with the colors here already. We'll blend it out with something darker soon. And they'll be straight gray. So back in with the 936. Just gonna just blend it out. And this will make the um the pink color in the tear duct more toned down. But it still has that pink undertone, which you can see. And so it matches the tone of the whole piece together. Um, what we're going to do is Go back in with the cream, which is 914. I'm turning my pencil on its side with a flat hold, and I'm just going to run it across. In particular, I'm going to run it up to the hairline, like so, and blend out. That slate grey that we laid down. So I'm lifting my pressure when we get to the highlight points. Like so. I'm increasing my pressure here. And I'm slowly burnishing things up to the highlight points and then lifting my pressure up as I go. So now I'm burnishing, lifting, lifting that pressure here as well at the lips, burnish, lift my pressure again. And then same here. So we're going to start burnishing now throughout. Now I'm not burnishing as I get to this hairline. I want to bring in some more pink tones up here. But my, my weight is probably medium pressure. Transitioning that out. And also here. So I'm, I'm burnishing now. And then lifting my pressure as I hit that highlight zone. Same thing here. What I want to do now is Go in with my pink tone, which is the blush pink, which is 928. I'm going to bring it here on the top of her forehead. I'm going to blend it out. I'm going to bring this pink probably halfway down the fringe and then blending it out.
above the brow bone, I'm going to add some pink as well. I'm going to blend it out lightly. Back on the light peach, which is 927, we're going to go on top of that and blend it out as well. Now what I'm going to do with the light peach is I'm going to burnish here. And then blend it up. Like so. And so what this peach has, it's got a bit of a pink tone and it knocks back the um the slate grey. And I'm gonna try and blend it. Zoom out. We're going to do the fun stuff, which is now burnish with the white. Now you want a clean white pencil. You don't want anything around the wax pen, wax pencil here. And what you want to do is you want to start with the highlight zones. So you burnish like so, and then you lift up your pressure and blend it. So let's go here, we're burnishing, we're following the curvature of the face and then blending it into what's there, now into the cheekbone, there we go, and as you can see, everything slowly lightens and you get that pale skin tone. Now we go chin. And then blend it right in to that shadow. And we burnish all this area. I'm going to lift my pencil, lighten my pressure. And then I'm going to start again here. The pressure is a bit harder. Blend it right in. There we go. You have to be careful when you burnish because if you bring it towards a dark color sometimes it pulls with the white so that's why i always like to start off in those lighter zones and bring it into the areas that are color pigmented and that way you don't um have any errors by picking up a dark color such as a slate gray now here I'm just going to do above the brow, blend it up, below the brow, blend it down, and then from there, use my white pencil and burnish throughout. And what I keep doing is working from the, the lightest zone, which is here, and working my way out in a radius form formation. The brow bone, bring it up and back up to the forehead, and following that contour of the face. I'm lifting my pressure as I get towards the darker shades. Now, rotating my pencil. I start here, burnish. As I move towards the outer edge, I lift my pressure, blend it in, and then burnish it all together. Same thing here. So as you notice, we kind of work towards the inside. And so what you can do now is just burnish the darker area here. 
And because I'm burnishing with a white, it's actually lifted the colour up a bit, but still retains the shadow. Gonna keep his blue. So. Let's zoom out. So that's the face so far. Um, we'll start doing the hands as well. I'm gonna go in with some white, which is 938, and I'm gonna go on top of the lips. I want it a bit more pale. So the way I'm gonna make it lighter is I'm just gonna burnish it with the white. And it's going to lift the colours a bit. And I'm going into that Posca pen. Okay, so because I'm still using skin colors, I'm going to do the arms, which is down here. We'll go on with the slate gray, which is the 936. I'm just going to etch out the shadows.
I'm gonna layer it more here at the joints because that's where a darker shadow is. I'm gonna feather it out a bit, like so. Same here. And when we feather it out, it will just make the transition between the colors a lot more smoother. I'm just going to put some of that slate grey 936 in the neck. I'm just going to blend things out a bit more because I'm conscious of the transitioning later on. Circular motions. So I'm going to transition into circular motions to blend things out. I'm going to add more layers here. So I know I'm adding a lot more blue down here, but that's because I want the face to like pop a bit more. So we add more shadow towards the bottom. So I want to go in with the French grey, which is 1072. And I'm and I know because down here it's a bit dark, so I want to add that grey colour.
and I'm going to soften it out. Remember to rotate your pencil so it remains sharp. And my strokes are very loose. I'm going to put more of this French grey colour around the fish. And on the forearm here. So I'm going to go over that slate grey and then we're going to blend it out with a softer touch, like so. And then again, we're going to do it all where we place that slate grey. And that way you still have that blue undertone, which really links to the face. Placing it also here under the neck, particularly under the chin, and we're going to create some contrast so that the chin pops out a bit more. You'll find this area will be a lot darker. Okay, so moving on, we're going to go in with a purple color because I want that pink hue to come through. So going in with your lavender, which is 934, we're just going to place lavender in certain areas. So here, on the left, we're going to layer on top of that French grey, and then blending that out. And then I see more over here, more towards the bottom of the elbow. We're just going to blend that out, like so. And under the palm. And then at the fingertips. Now because this area is a lot darker, we're going to go in with a 90% color tone as the other French grey, it will still be um, same tonal family and it won't be too much of a contrast between the face. So the reason why I'm using this is because I notice the hands in certain shadow points are a lot darker than others. So what I want to do is I'm going to add this French grey where these shadows lie. Like so. Same thing on the top of the palm. And my strokes are uh, long because I'm following the similar type of brush strokes on the original painting.
Now, if you're coloring because you're stressed today, I want you to breathe as you color. And with every breath, let go of all your anxieties and worries. And just follow the rhythm of your art. And let yourself just express and release whatever tension you're building up in your shoulders. Whatever tension you're holding up in your hands. If you notice your hands are a bit tense, just loosen your grip a bit. You know, just go with the flow. Keep things really soft. And don't overthink anything. The next colour I'm going to get is this pink, which is 928, and I'm going to put this in some of the skin, not everywhere, really similar to what we do with the lavender. We're going to bring in that warm pink tone. Now if you guys ever do my tutorials, it would be great if you shared them. If you share them with other people who you know colour, I know there's a small colouring community. And sometimes when we do great pieces, it's always good to lift each other up, raise each other up and share so that others can benefit. And sometimes I know that colouring can be really um, an anxious thing because you want to be perfect. I am a perfectionist and so sometimes I get anxiety um, over things because they have to look a certain way. But when I always go back to colouring, I always just relax and just let it be. I just follow the rhythm and just trust the process. We're going to put some of this blush pink 928 on the inner palms here. And we're going to put it all over her left hand, just lightly. Bring it down to the elbow. We're going to bring more of this blush pink into this elbow, like so. It's just so we have that warm here. And then here, just on this side. And I tell you, I'm, I'm tripping out because I'm worrying that I'm messing it up. But, you know, again, breathe. Just let it go. At your ability to have to control everything and just follow the motions. Just layering it. Okay, so let's just recap. What you're seeing there is a lot of the shadow tones and the warm tones that will peek through later on. So now we're going to build up that skin color that will layer on top and neutralize most of that color, most of this trippy color that you're seeing here. And um, it won't look as daunting as what you see now. So, we're going to go in, because we've been working a lot with cool tones and pink tones, we start off with a light peach because it's still got a pink tone into it, but it's got a, um, a more fleshy yellow colour in, in this pencil as well. So it's a good pencil to, to transition to from this point. So, with 927, we're going to go on top of everything, lightly, and we're just going to blend everything. And the way I've laid these colors is so that it still connects to the, the face. Um, but obviously because of the way the original painting is done, it's going to have more contrast towards the bottom. And I'm just doing really loose, big strokes over everything, keeping my pressure really, really light. Remember to rotate your pencil as well, and this minimizes the need to sharpen. And as you can see, so a lot of that blue tone is disappearing now. Um, it's neutralizing in a sense. And 
the reason why we use these colors if you think of the color wheel um, yellow neutralizes blue because this is a pink tone with a bit of yellow in it it is slowly um, knocking back that blue but it's still allowing the undertones to come through that's what you want I think it's always interesting to do skin with a bit of undertone it just gives it that that bit of magic And so if you look at this now, you can see the colors that link towards the face. Of course, the face is popping more, and that's the intention. So although I'm not knocking out all the blue, there will be some colors that come later on that will knock out that blue a bit more. But remember, the intention is not to knock it out completely and override it, but to keep that undertone still present. And that's why we layer up our colors. Now the neck area isn't so isn't warm at all. It's quite a cool toned skin, like light skin color. So that's why I haven't put that much pink in this area because there is no warmth in this area. Um, if you refer to the original painting. Now, now that we're done with the light peach, I'm gonna go in with something that's a bit more warm as well. This is beige, which is 997, and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna layer on that beige color. Now when you look at the hands in the original painting, there's not much of a highlight zone as what we had in the face. So you don't have to worry about keeping certain areas clean and pure in white um, because the lightest point in this hand piece is probably um, going to be a flesh tone. There won't be any white in it at all. So as you can see, I'm layering that beige color and that blue is slowly dissipating. And it's more appearing as an undertone. Now remember guys, you don't have to always put on these videos with my voice audio. You can always put some music on in the background. Or you can mute the thing and just listen, watch the screen. But sometimes I feel like when you're coloring, you're not always going to look at the screen if you know if you're just following a tutorial to pick up colors. To be honest, I kept my tutorial page a secret from a lot of my friends and relatives. I I always felt like coloring was a very um, it was it wasn't like a traditional type of form of art like painting drawing um, and I felt that it wouldn't be recognized or or um, valued but I realized that the coloring in the coloring world and the people in it do it because it is a form of expression and relaxation. And I find that I've realized that my channel is helping people overcome your anxieties about coloring. Um, and, you know, sometimes you color and you color with company. And I've 
started to uh, I've started to um, try to be more authentic to myself and who I am and that may mean having no shame of coloring not being embarrassed about it you know owning it and I think that comes with this confidence in yourself and your abilities and confidence in who you are as a person which is important um, and not everyone not everyone has that and it takes time and a lot of hard work on yourself to get to that point so this is where I am and that's where I'm like I feel like I gravitate back to coloring the shadows link to the face very much um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a more yellow tone so see this color here we're trying to bring that into the arms and same thing we're just going to go over everything now your paper is not flat at this point but I would say it is probably got 70 percent coverage and if you can reflect on how many colors we've laid down it's a good effort So guys, if you're watching this, please follow me on Instagram. Um, I sometimes post more regularly on, in, on Instagram than YouTube. And you can interact with me through there. And maybe I do some sneak peeks of things that I'm doing at the moment. Say, if my next coloring piece is out, I'll do a release on that. Or if I'm filming or editing, I keep you guys updated with the progress. And I think that also keeps me... Um, it keeps me, like, on task. To create content you know not to get lazy because the way I see it coloring is a form of mental exercise and doctors will always encourage you to exercise and be physical but at the same time you shouldn't only just work your body but you should work your mind and that means sometimes allowing yourself to detune de-stress and the way we do that is coloring I'm getting to that point where I'm worrying if I've taken it too far. I'm not sure, but I'm going to do something, which is I'm noticing certain things. And I think it's good that I explain to you as I'm noticing them. So see here, this purple, it's a bit too purple for me from what I can see in the camera. Here, a little, but not so much. So I'm going to neutralize it with a bit of a pink. And then we're going to go on top with a peach. So the way I'm doing that is I'm going over it and just transitioning it a bit better. And I think it was because it was such a hard purple line that was coming through and by transitioning it a bit more and blending it out it it doesn't appear as noticeable bring more of this blush color into the palms in some way so I'm going to layer more of this pink here like so now there's really no there's really no magic secret to coloring if you know how to do the basic techniques it's just patience time not overthinking and for someone like me 
who um, suffers from a lot of stress and anxiety, overthinking is my one of my biggest downfalls because I am a perfectionist and because I want things to be perfect, I always um, second guess. And the one thing that colouring has taught me is to just trust the process, trust where things are going and, you know, have foresight to know what the next steps are. All right, let's see. Now this is the fun bit. The fun bit is the burnishing bit. So I'm just seeing if there's any more I can add before I burnish. I'm gonna add more of this blush pink, which is a 928, into the fingertips. And more of that slate grey as well because we're going to bring it up Now, I don't think this my page is really something for kids. Maybe young kids in their preteens or teens. Um, definitely not young children, but it is definitely an advanced type of colouring tutorial. And so it's probably why I'm trying to keep things PG, um, not too serious, not too heavy. I'm going to go in with the French grey, which is 1076. I'm going to just blend out that slate grey I just laid down. And then I'm going to go in with this lavender, which is 934. And I'm going to transition those shadow colours out. And this lavender is great because it links back to the blush pink that we laid down previously. I'm going to blend it out here on the back of the hand. And I'm going to go in with that 90% uh, French grey again, which is the 1076. I just want to increase that contrast, which is under the palm. And you can see that contrast really adds to it. I'm going to put some hair on the neck very lightly. Not so much. Because I still want the hands. Because the hands are in front. So the hands should be the most contrasting. A bit more down here. Let's transition that out. Just blend it out. What I'm really doing is creating that contrast in the skin. I'm going to add some more on this side. Trying to create that harmony. Back in with the slate grey, which is 936, I'm going to knock and blend out that 90% French grey. Like so.
We're going to go back in with the light peach, which is 927, and transition that colour a bit more. And as you can see, paper's getting pretty flat. It's probably 90% there. And very shortly, we're going to start burnishing this skin. Now, because I don't want to lighten these dark areas, I'm going to actually burnish with this light peach area, which is 927. We're going to go in here, burnish, blend it out. Because I don't want it to be ultimate light, because what the white pencil will do, it lightens it. This will still lighten it, but it still retains that contrast in the colour. While also plugging in some of that warm skin tone. Okay, then we're going to feather it out once we hit the middle here. And so, as you can see, I burnished it, but it's still, it's still quite blue, which is what you want. You still got that contrast. Same thing here. I burnish and blend it out, and I'm following that contour of the arm, of the hand that I just placed down, and we're going to blend it out like so. Now, as I said before, you've got to be careful when you're going with dark, when you're burnishing over dark colors because, because these pencils are wax based. Um, wax based? Yeah, wax, I think it's waxed. Um, they pull. They pull a lot, very easily. So you've got to be conscious when you're burnishing around dark pencils. Sometimes it's good to have a spare piece of paper so you can clean your pencil so that you can. Um, get that uh, darker wax off the tip. So we're burnishing here, blending it out. Remember to breathe. Following the curves of the arms, and then you start to lift your pressure as you get to the center. Then hold up a bit. Okay, we're going to go in with some white. Now, the parts I want to focus on are the top of the hands. So just like what we did before with the face, we start off with the light sections and we work our way out to the darker zones. And that way you're not pulling in that dark colour into the white areas or the lighter areas. I'll put some of that white, which is 938. On the back of the palm and then blending it into the darker colors stopping once I hit those darker shadow zones again we're going to go from here burnishing it and making our way out So going in with the white, which is 938. Now what I want to do now is... I'm going to 
put the white down here as well because I want to lighten this area and burnish and flatten the colors here. Next, I'm going to burnish around the neck. We're going to add more of this black peach color though, which is 927. Now we're going to go back in with the white, which is 938. We're going to burnish. Only in certain spot parts though, because some of the areas will be used for hair and others will be, well the, what, the parts that we're doing now are the areas that I want to maintain as skin. Now as you can see, this white is lightening that slate grey. And we're going to blend it here as well. depending on what the colour of the hair will be but I'm going to go back in with a slate grey around the hair because I believe it needs a bit more shadow like so I'm going to go in with that 90% grey which is 1076 I'm going to lightly add that layer And then we're going to run it here on the neck. I'm going to add a bit more under these, the neck just for that contrast. Even though we burnish, I'm still going to go on top with this 90% grey. I can still build on some of it. And I'm really only doing this just to give it a bit more contrast. Because when we burnish it, obviously we've knocked the colour back down to something more pale. But the pencil is still workable. So we can add back in. Obviously if you press really hard then um, you won't be able to, but I generally don't. Gonna go in with a nine one four only on the neck. I'm really happy with that. Probably going to try and put something yellow here. I'm just trying to think of a colour. Yeah. I'm in a 
relaxed mood. So I'm going to go in with Artichoke, which is a 1098. I'm going to, because it's a yellow color, go on top here. And as you can see, it's adding a bit more yellow into this. Cool. Let's add some more on the wrist. Loose grip. Holding it further back. Quite content with this, I don't want to push it any further. Um, I'll probably move on to hair next, or maybe eyes, eyes next, and then hair, and we'll go from there. 